we all know that Jesus is ultimately the the only hero, at least the the only undivided, uh, you know, perfect hero. But I think there's a, a lot of good reasons why why we need to have heroes in our own lives, people who we we emulate, we follow. Uh, just as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And I think of lots of people, living and dead, who have been some of my formative influences and heroes. Uh, so just just one or two. I think of first encountering Martin Lloyd-Jones when I was a college student and reading his sermons and then later found out, you know, now so many of them are online. You can listen to his sermons and reading that really thick two-volume biography from Ian Murray of The Doctor. And what did I know about Welsh Calvinism or what I even know about ministry in the United Kingdom at the time? But the, the, the thing that gripped me was his passion for preaching. And I devoured every word of preaching and preachers, and I, I loved every... <laughs> every chapter in that biography and the sermons that I was reading and the sermons on the Mount. And it helped that when uh, I met my wife, she was reading sermons on the Mount. That's one of the reasons I, I thought this, this is a good sign if she's reading Martin Lloyd-Jones. Uh, so all of those things, I just was gripped by his attention to the word, uh, his his passion and his confidence in preaching. It, it helped me to to get, as as Lloyd Jones would say, something of the romance of preaching. And I was so struck in reading about him and reading the things that he wrote and the sermons that th- this is what I want to do. I, I want to preach, and I'll never preach like he did and have the sense of God like he did. But to to hear that, see that feel that from him and reading about him was profoundly influential for me. When I think about people who are heroes in my own life, boy, I, uh, I can mention so many people. I, I love my mom and dad and think of all that they've taught me. Uh, I, I probably think most quickly in heroes in ministry, I think of the, the elders that I serve with at my church. And, uh, you know, I think of Tim and Jeff and Jerry and Bruce and Dan and Peter and Tim and Byron and Mark and, you know, th- there's a dozen or so of them and, uh, you know, I, I didn't mention all of them, but I, I could, I, I got pictures of all of them in my mind and, and I think about, um, they go and, you know, work at the, the assembly line at a GM plant and then come to an elders meeting or they, they work doing, uh, shoe repair, come to an elders meeting, or they work in state government and come to an I mean, they, they're, they're doing their life, trying to raise their family, care for their kids, their grandkids. And uh, I get to study the Bible all day. And these men come and, and, and they labor and they go to long meetings. And, you know, if I have to, I can rearrange something. I can come into work late. I mean, they, they got to get up some four or five in the morning. And they, they love the people of God, and they've loved me as their pastor. And I'm so thankful for these men and men like them to labor with them in ministry. The, these, uh, these elders, and I know there, there's, there's lots of men like this in so many good, healthy churches. The, these are some of my heroes in ministry and people that I think these, these are folks of whom the world is, is not worthy. And, and I'm, you know, as a pastor, just privileged to, to minister with them and labor with them.